let's start with the applications, let's discuss them. Yes, they are saying that the <coughs> net worth of A Limited on 31st March 14 is 700 crores. A Limited has not decided to voluntarily apply the end AS. From which date A Limited shall apply end AS? What do you say? Net worth of A Limited. When nothing is clarified, we will assume that the companies are listed, right? So it's a listed company, has a net worth of 700 crores on 31st March 14. Tell me, phase one, phase two? Phase one. So you may just write over there itself. If they are saying from which date A will apply in days? 1st April 16, right? And what shall be the transition date? 1st April 15. It will be exactly one year before it. Next, they are saying, will the following companies with negative net worth need to comply with end AS? Company A is listed having a negative net worth of rupees 600 crores. What do you say? You are a listed company, so you have to follow the end AS. Tell me from which date will you follow end AS? 1st April? 1417, right? 1st April 17. So you are having a negative net worth. Don't look at simply at the figure, 600, so 1st April 16. Your net worth is negative. You are not fulfilling the net worth condition. You are fulfilling the listing condition. So you are already listed, you have no choice. 1st April 17. Company B is unlisted and it has a negative net worth of, six, uh, negative net worth of 300 crores. What do you say? Unlisted company? India says not applicable. So we'll say not applicable. But can you think of some situation where still you may have to follow the NDAs? You become subsidiary or parent or associate or joint venture of someone who is following NDAs. Or voluntarily you decide, oh, I will follow NDAs. How dare you stop me, right? So then you will have to follow the NDAs. Three, they are saying net worth of C Limited. Yes, here those different dates are given. So there is a company, C Limited. Net worth on 31st March 14. They are saying it is 450 crores. Then they are saying 31st March 15. It is 475. And then they say 31st March 16. 31st March 16. They are still saying it is below 500 crores. So this is what they are suggesting. Now they are saying from which date C limited should apply in AS. It's 450, 475 and still I don't cross 500 crores. So we will not be covered in phase 1. We will get covered in phase 2. You will have to start following from 1st April 17. Of course, we have assumed that the company is listed. That assumption is there. D Limited is formed on 1st April 17 and for the year ended 31st March 18, it is expected that its net worth shall be rupees 20 crores. Is there any requirement for it to follow in AS? If yes, from when? You are forming on 1st April 17 and if we assume that this company is listed, what do you say? From 1st April 17 itself, you will have to start following the end AS. So we say 1st April 17. In 5, they are saying net worth of E Limited as on 31st March 14 is 550 crores. It applied end AS from financial year 2016-17. E Limited purchased 80% shares of a foreign company on 1st May 17. The foreign company has net worth of simply rupees 10 crores. The foreign company follows IFRS for accounting. E Limited is now in the process of finalizing its accounts for the year 2017-18. Can E Limited follow IFRS instead of end AS? And B, they are saying, can the foreign company follow IFRS instead of end AS? What do you say? Right, they have given us E Limited. So the, if I just put it on the board, E Limited, it is having 80% shares. 
it has 80 percent shares in a foreign company. So, this is the holding structure which they have given. E Limited, that is an Indian company. So, we say it is an Indian company and they are themselves saying that we have applied the end AS. So, you are following the end AS. So, it will follow the end AS. And now, I have a foreign company. They are saying foreign company is having a net worth of only 10 crores of rupees. Fine. And based on this, that is the first question. Can E Limited follow IFRS? In short, they are saying that this foreign company is following IFRS. So, first question, let us answer that. Can the Indian company follow IFRS? No. You may argue that, see, our NDS is all based on IFRS. So, whether I follow NDS or whether I follow IFRS, what difference will it make? No. You are an Indian company, you have to follow the laws of India. And that is the reason. In India, you have to follow the NDS. So, the question, uh, uh, sorry, the answer to the first question obviously is no. Next, they are saying, can the foreign company follow IFRS instead of the end AS? Now, say the company is based in a foreign country, it will have to prepare its separate financial statements. So, this foreign company will prepare its separate financial statements. And when it prepares its separate financial statements, it will follow IFRS. Again, I will repeat the same thing. It is a law of India. You can apply to Indian companies. You cannot apply to a foreign company. So, foreign company has to follow the rules which are there in that country. So, the rules in that country want you to prepare as per IFRS. So, it will prepare as per IFRS. But because it is your subsidiary, we will also prepare consolidated financial statements. So, foreign company, we will carry out CFS. And when we are carrying out CFS, foreign company will have to redraft its financial statements as per the end years. So, foreign company in separate financial statements, IFRS in CFS, end years. Question 6 and all these questions as you are going through, simple and conceptual. No, what I am just saying is when you read that announcement, you know, you will start wondering who will ask these kinds of questions. But when they say simple and conceptual, I believe there cannot be anything more simple and conceptual. Right. I, I received calls from a lot many students that should we attend this workshop or not because of that announcement. Till that announcement, a lot many were interested in doing the workshop. The moment that announcement came, and this announcement comes before every CA final exam. Please understand that every CA final exam, ever since NDS has been introduced, the same announcement is made. In November 17, same announcement will come. They will just, uh, sorry, November 18, they will just remove May 18, and instead they will write November 18, and they will put that same announcement. And they will say simple conceptual question. My problem is with that only. No definition. Tell us now what is simple, what is conceptual. I believe this is simple and conceptual. I hope you agree with me. What do you say? I am assuming yes. Yes. Net worth of A private limited as on 31st March 14 was rupees 650 crores. A private limited started following end AS from the year 2016-17. In 2017-18, A private limited lost a major patent suit which affected its profitability. This is reflected in lower net worth as on 31st March 18 of rupees 100 crores. A private limited expects its net worth to be further eroded below rupees 100 crores by the time it is 31st March 2019. A private limited wishes to discontinue applying end AS. Can it do so? We really did not need so much of information. What do you say? Once you start following end AS, no roll back. You may lose suit after suit. Your positive net worth may become negative net worth. Does not matter. Once you start following end AS, you have to keep on following the end AS. What is the extreme step? Get liquidated or as you were saying, you know, find some other company and take over yourself 
and then say, okay, now Tata bye bye end is. Otherwise, you will have to keep on following the end is. As on 31st March 14, company A is a listed company and has a net worth of rupees 50 crores. As on 31st March 15, the company is no more a listed company. Whether company A is required to comply with end is from the financial year 2017-18 or not. It's a very typical situation. You are a listed company and in a very time bound manner, you know, you are delisting yourself. So, that is what they are saying. 31st March 14, please understand the status of this company. Right, you have 31st March 14. What are they saying? It has a net worth of 50 crores. More important, it is listed, right? And then on 31st March 15, 31st March 15, I am becoming, uh, sorry, I am becoming an unlisted company. So, this is what I am doing. Decide whether NDS is applicable or not. Phase 1, tell me, phase 1, what was the condition? Phase 1, 500 crores or more. When? 31st March 14, right? The first date was 31st March 14. So, when I look into 31st March 14, I realize my net worth is only 50 crores of rupees. So, in any case, I will not be covered by phase 1. And then by the time, you know, phase 2 is applicable, if I had remained a listed company, then I would be applying the NDS from 1st April 17. But what have we done? We have become an unlisted company. So, once you become an unlisted company, phase 1 condition was 500 crores, which is not getting fulfilled. Phase 2 condition for an unlisted company, 250 crores or more, that is also not getting fulfilled. So, I will not follow the end is. Unless and until you know uh, when you will start following the end is. Right? You voluntarily decide to do it so, that is another thing. Or you may become a parent or subsidiary or associate or joint venture of some company which is following NDS. Then you may have to apply the NDS. Everyone fine with it? So, our answer for question 7 will be no. Yeah, question 8. They are saying company A is a listed company and has three subsidiaries, company X, company Y and company Z. As on 31st March 14, the net worth of company A is 600 crores, for company X is 100 crores and for company Y, 400 and Z is 210. All the three subsidiaries are non-listed companies. So, they have given us a case of listed company and we have unlisted companies. Our main company A is listed, while the other three are our subsidiaries X, Y and Z. They are our subsidiaries and all these three subsidiaries are unlisted. Then 31st March 14, net worth is given to us. So, 31st March 14, net worth. If we just go through it, the net worth of A is 600 crores. What about X? 100 crores. What about Y? 400 and Z? 210. So, this is the net worth on 31st March 14. So, that is the basic details that we put of para 1. Next, they are saying during the financial year 2014-15, company A has sold its entire investment in company X on 31st December 14. So, on 31st December 14, we are selling the shares. So, they are saying shares of subsidiary sold, right. So, we are selling it on 31st December 14. Then in case B, they are saying company A has sold its investment in company Y on 31st December 15. 
So here I sell away the shares on 31st December 15. And then they are saying in case C that during the financial year 2016-17, company has sold its investment company Z on 31st December 16. So here I am selling the shares on 31st December 16. So this is the typical situation which has been given. You are having a listed company which is A. It has three subsidiaries which are unlisted and their networks are provided. And our parent subsidiary relationship is not continuing. On different dates we have sold away the shares. So these are the dates on which the shares have been sold. So first, let us discuss it in this way. Let us say shares of subsidiary are not sold. We take a different view over here, are not sold. So we just want to know from which date NDS will be applicable. Let us take a variation of this case. Let us say we have not sold the shares, then tell me. The net worth is 600 crores. Decide. Phase 1, phase 2? Phase 1. Phase 1? 1st April 16, right. So 1st April 16, I will follow the end AS. Tell me, if the parent follows the end AS, will the subsidiaries also have to follow the end AS? Respective of the, irrespective of the net worth? Yes. So 1st April 16 over here, 1st April 16 even over here, and 1st April 16 even over here. This is taking a simple case where the shares of the subsidiaries were not sold. Now, the way they have given the question, they are saying that the shares have been sold. So, subsidiary shares have been sold. Phase 1 will kick from 1st April 16. So, we will have to decide the status of the company on 1st April 16. So, I will say what is the status of company on 1st April 16. Company A is fine. Decide for company X. 1st April 16, when you will start implementing the end AS, is company X still your subsidiary? Is company X still your subsidiary? When did you sell the shares? 31st December 14. I have already sold the shares on 31st December 14. See, I will apply end AS on 1st April 16. So, on 1st April 16, whatever subsidiaries I have, on 1st April 16, whatever associates and joint ventures that I have, they have to follow the NDS. I cannot argue that in previous year I had, an in, uh, I had a subsidiary, so that subsidiary will also follow NDS. That will not happen. So tell me, what is the status of the company? Not a subsidiary. What do you say? Tell me, you have sold the shares on 31st December 15. Is it still your subsidiary? No, so it is not a subsidiary. So, not a subsidiary. Tell me here, 31st December 16, ask yourself, 1st April 16, was that company your subsidiary on 1st April 16? Answer is yes, that it was your subsidiary. So, we will say is a subsidiary. Having now done this, let us decide from when is end AS applicable. Ask yourself now, when shall you apply the end AS? What do you say? Company A, tell me. Company A, 1st April 16, it has to follow end AS. So, 1st April 16, tell me, this subsidiary, it has a net worth of 100, it is an unlisted company, 100. 1st April 16, what exactly is the net worth is not given, but let us assume it is. 250 crores or less. So, what do you say? Not applicable. So, I will not apply the end AS over here. What do you say here? Not a subsidiary. What is your net worth? 400. Unlisted company, 400 crores. When will you apply end AS? 1st April 17. Will you get covered in phase 2? So, 1st April 17. So, 1st April 17. Tell me, what about this company? Company Z. It is a subsidiary of A and A is already following end AS. So, by that rationale, you have to follow the end AS. So, here my answer will be 1st April 16. So, 
if all the three companies were remaining your subsidiary, then all four companies will simultaneously apply NDAs from 1st April 16. But because you sold away the shares, status has to be checked on the day when the NDAs will be applied. Otherwise, see, I'll have a past history of many subsidiaries and many associates. Just because I start following NDAs, I cannot retrospectively ask my subsidiaries, I mean my past subsidiaries and associates to follow NDAs. So the status has to be checked on the day when you are applying the end AS. And that's what we realize. A is covered in phase 1. Because Z was your subsidiary on 1st April 16, it will also get covered in phase 1. X is unlisted. It will have a net worth of 100, so it will not be covered in phase 1. We are further assuming its net worth has not crossed 250 crores. So, not covered in phase 2. Well, this is an unlisted company. I will cover it in phase 2 because of the net worth criteria. This question that we just did, it's your RTP question, not the latest RTP. Right, the same thing, simple and conceptual. I'll keep on reminding you guys. We go for the next one. Yeah, in question 9, they are saying uh, company X and company Y registered in India having a net worth of 600 crores and 100 crores respectively are subsidiaries of a foreign company ABC Incorporation, which has a net worth of more than 500 crores. Whether company X and Y are required to comply with the NDAs from financial year 2016 17 on the basis of net worth of the parent foreign company or on the basis of their own net worth. X and Y are given and they are subsidiaries of ABC Incorporation. So, we have ABC Incorporation. This is a foreign company. They are saying its net worth is more than 500 crores. And this company has two subsidiaries. So, you have two subsidiaries, which are they? Company X and company Y. They are saying these are Indian companies, fine. And then they have given us their net worth. Company X, what is the net worth? 600 crores. And company Y has a net worth of 100 crores. So, this is the structure which they have given to us. First of all, let us start with a foreign company. Tell me, can we ask a foreign company to follow end AS? No, it is not possible. 
It is not possible in separate financial statements. It is also not possible in consolidated financial statements. So, when it comes to the foreign company, this foreign company will not follow the end AS. So, that is there. Next question is whether company X and Y are required to comply with the end AS. So, let us discuss that now. What do you say company X? It has a net worth of 600 crores. If it is a net worth of 600 crores, Shall it follow end AS? Yes. yes. So, it will follow the end AS. So, we will have to apply end AS over here. <coughs> the subsidiary Y has 100 crores. What do you say? Will it follow the end AS? No. So, it will not follow the end AS. So, end AS is not going to be followed. It will follow its existing accounting standard. So, what does that mean? You are not deciding whether they will follow NDS or not on the basis of net worth of the foreign company. You are deciding on the basis of net worth of individual companies. Individual companies will look at the net worth and they will decide whether NDS is applicable or not. So, we have a, <coughs> we are having a very typical situation over here, isn't it? This company may follow maybe IFRS, this company may follow maybe NDS, this company will follow existing accounting standards. So, a very typical situation arises over here. You can simplify this a bit if you wish, right? You are controlling that company. You cannot ask this company that no, do not follow NDS now. This company has to follow NDS. You can just ask this company also to start following the NDS. Then at least your consolidated financial statements will get simplified, right? Company X Limited has prepared its financial statements under IFRS for the first time for the year ended 31st March 2016. It had adopted its date of transition to IFRS as 1st April 2014. As per the company's Indian Accounting Standard Rules 2015, Company X Limited is mandatorily required to prepare its financial statements as per NDS for the year ended 31st March 17. And hence, under NDS, the date of transition would be 1st April 2015. Whether company X can select date of transition under NDS as 1st April 2014 instead of 1st April 2015. Since it has already carried out exercise of transition on 1st April 2014 for the purpose of IFR. you have already adopted IFRS. Now, you did not adopt the end AS, right? So, you adopted IFRS. And when did you do from IFRS? 1st April 14. But we know that you are not supposed to follow IFRS. You are supposed to follow the end AS. And end AS will be applicable from 1st April 16. Unless and until we assume that you have voluntarily adopted the end AS. But instead of that, they are saying that company X has prepared its financial statements under the IFRS. So, if you have already prepared under IFRS, that will not be accepted. In India, you have to follow the end AS. And if you are covered in phase 1, then you will have to implement end AS from 1st April 16. And in that case, your transition date will be 1st April 15. You cannot argue that I had followed IFRS, so consider the transition date also as 1st April 14. Your transition date will remain 1st April uh, 15. So, what we can say here, the question is, can company X select the transition under NDS as 1st April 14 instead of 1st April 15, since it has already carried out the exercise of transition for the purpose of IFRS? Your transition to IFRS will not be accepted for the end AS. So, since you will be covered in phase 1, you will prepare from 1st April 16. Because you will prepare from 1st April 16, your transition date will be 1st April 15. You cannot have 1st April 14. But you did not go voluntarily for end AS. You went voluntarily for the IFRS. So, it won't be accepted.
Yes, in question 11, they are saying, can we discuss question 11? A debt listed company has a net worth for the last three years as follows. So, you are having 1260.83, that is on 31st March 14. Then it becomes 1411 on 31st March 15. And it is 485.22 on 31st March 16. Question is whether company A is required to comply with end AS from financial year 2017-18. No, what should it be? 2016-17, isn't it? So your net worth on 31st March 14, it has already crossed 500 crores. It's a debt listed company, doesn't matter. Listed company, we say listed, equity share as well as debt security. So that doesn't matter. On 31st March 14, your net worth was already more than 500 crores. That means you are already covered in phase 1. And if you are already covered in phase 1, 1st April 16, so that would be 2016-17. So the question itself is wrong. Should we apply from 2017-18? The answer will be no. On the contrary, from 2016-17. Yes, in question 12, they are saying company X limited has been covered under phase 1 of NDS and needs to apply NDS from financial year 2016-17. Company Y, which is an associate company of company X, is a charitable organization and registered under section 8 of the Companies Act. Whether company Y is required to comply with NDS from the financial year 2016-17. You are a charitable company, will not count, right? You are an associate of a company which is applying NDS. So, if the company is applying, in, I mean, your investor is applying NDS, you will also have to follow NDS. Charitable company does not mean you will not maintain your books of accounts. Books of accounts have to be maintained, and it has to be maintained as per the NDS in this case. We do question 13. Yeah, that's a pretty typical one. It is merging the two road maps actually. So company X is falling under phase two of MCA road map for companies, and hence NDS is applicable to it from the financial year 2017-18. Company X is a subsidiary of company Y. Company Y is an unlisted NBFC having a net worth of 285 crores. What will be the date of applicability of NDS for company X and company Y? If NDS applicability date of parent NBFC is different from the applicability date of corporate subsidiary, then how will the consolidated financial statements of parent NBFC be prepared? Yes, yeah, so they are giving a case of company X. So, if we just try to put it by way of a diagram, there is company X. And this company X is subsidiary of company Y. So that's what they say. And then they are saying that company Y is an unlisted NBFC. So they say it is unlisted NBFC. What is its net worth? 285 crores. Then you have company X. They are saying it is covered in phase 2. So, we don't worry about its net worth. It's covered in phase 2. So, it has to apply in AS from 1st April 17. Everyone, Agra is still here, right? Now, this is an unlisted NBFC. If you wish, you can have a glance at that road map for NBFC. If you see page 6, there is a phase 2. They are saying NBFCs that are unlisted companies, having a net worth of 250 crores or more, but less than 500 crores. So, as per the NBFC, it will be also covered in phase 2. But this phase 2 means 
I will apply NDAs from 1st April 19. So, this is the situation that we have. You have a parent company which will follow NDAs from 1st April 19 and you have a subsidiary which has to follow as per 1st April 17. This time you cannot argue that all your pa uh, subsidiary and associates and everyone has to follow the NDAs because the two roadmaps are different. One roadmap is for corporate entities, another roadmap is for NBFCs, which are governed by, uh, or I could say the guidelines are to be followed by the RBI. So, this is the situation that we have over here. What do you say? What is the question? What will be the date of applicability of NDS for company X and company Y? I believe we have answered that. Company Y will follow NDS from 1st April 19 and company X will follow from 1st April 17. And then they are themselves raising this typical situation. They are saying if NDS applicability date for parent NBFC is different from the applicability date of corporate subsidiary then how will consolidated financial statements be prepared? See what will happen, this company X, it will have separate financial statements as well as CFS, right? In SFS it will follow end AS, but your parent is not going to follow end AS right now. Your parent will follow end AS at a much later date. So what will happen is in the in between years, how shall I prepare consolidated financial statements? As a parent, understand what's your parent following? Your parent is following the existing years. So you will have to ask your corporate subsidiary to redraft its financial statements as per existing years. So what will happen is in CFS, this company will have to prepare as per existing years. See, subsidiary has to confirm with parent. Parent doesn't confirm with the subsidiary. Remember that thing. So, when you are doing, uh, when you are following two separate sets of accounting standards, as a subsidiary, I'll have to confirm with that of the parent. So, this problem will be for what years? 2017-18 and 2018-19. After that, both companies will start following NDS, then there will be no problem. But for two years, 2017-18 and 2018-19, I'll have a typical situation. X will follow NDS in its separate books, while Y will follow existing AS in its books. And then I'll have to carry out the consolidation. And at that time, subsidiary will confirm with that of it's your parent company, right? So you have to show respect to the parent, right? You can't ask the parent that why don't you follow the NDS and the matter gets solved. So that will not happen. Subsidiary will have to confirm with that of the parent. This is there even in our regular CFS also, right? In AS21 also, if parent and subsidiary are following different accounting policies, we always ask subsidiary to redraft and confirm with that of the parent. Parent does not confirm with that of the subsidiary. So, that is the same thing that we are doing here. Company X on standalone basis had a net worth of above rupees 250 crores, but below rupees 500 crores in financial year 2013-14 as well as financial year 2014-15 and is expected to exceed rupees 500 crores in the financial year 2015-16 from which date company X should apply the end AS. What do you say? 250 crores, 2013-14, then it is becoming, uh, it is still less than 500 crores and finally we are expecting that it will cross 500 crores. When? In the financial year 2015-16. So, on 31st March 16, we are expecting that the net worth will be more than 500 crores. 
Shall you get covered in phase 1? Yes. So from 1st April 16, you will have to start applying the end year. Basically, no preparatory time. That is what we were discussing earlier also. So, you cannot argue that it just became 500, you know, give me a year or two, I have to prepare myself. That will not happen. Yes, they are saying company B is an associate company of company A, company X is the holding company of company A. Company X has decided to adopt NDS voluntarily from 2015-16. Whether company A and B are statutorily required to comply with NDS from financial year 2015-16. What do you say? Voluntary adoption, right? Something rare in real life, but that's what they are saying here. Look at the relationship. They are saying there is company B. They are saying company B is an associate of company A. So it is associate of company A. And then they are saying com uh, company X is the holding company of A. So we now have X. So, this company X is the holding company. This is of course, your associate and this is your subsidiary, right? So, this is what we have. So, A is turning out to be a subsidiary. And who is deciding to follow end AS? They are saying company X has decided to follow end AS. So, it will follow end AS. Tell me, if A, uh, sorry, X follows end AS, well, company A, your subsidiary also have to follow India's? Yes. yes. 16. A company covered under phase 1 having a net worth of rupees 600 crores decides to give comparatives for financial year 2015-16 and financial year 2014-15. What should be the date of transition in this case? What do you say? You are covered under phase 1. So, now don't talk about voluntary and all, right? When you say I am covered in phase 1, that means, you have decided not to voluntarily adopt NDS. So, phase 1. Tell me, when does phase 1 kick in? Phase 1 kicks in 1st April 16. If it is 1st April 16, tell me, what will be your transition date? So, what is your transition date? 1st April 15. Now, what are they saying? They are saying, we will give comparatives for 2 years. No, this is what you have decided. I will give comparatives for the previous year. I will give comparatives even for the year before the previous year. This is what they, you have uh, decided. So, now the question is, what should be the date of transition in this case? See, your transition date will not change. Your transition date will still remain 1st April 15. You are covered in phase 1, so you have to apply in days from 1st April 16. If you will apply from 1st April 16, your transition date will be 1st April 15. So, you cannot change the transition date to 1st April 14. Your transition date will remain 1st April 15. <coughs> Transition date of 1st April 14 was possible only if you had voluntarily adopted the NDS. But they are categorically saying it is covered under phase 1. Whenever you read this, that this company is covered under phase 1 or covered under phase 2, automatically voluntary adoption has been ruled out. Because if you had already voluntarily adopted it, then I do not have to worry about phase 1, phase 2, because I have already started following the NDS. And as such, it will be difficult to find a company, you know, giving three years figures, you know, current year and previous year and even a year before that. But in case if you want to do it, you can go ahead, but you cannot say my transition date has changed. My transition date still remains 1st April 15. And finally, the last question, that is the question that we do today and then we end our session. 
right we are constantly talking about the net worth so let's see how it can be calculated uh, they are saying based on the following details of pelican limited determine its net worth for the purpose of end years roadmap so they have given one entire list we have to scrutinize the list we have to decide which item will be included in the net worth which item will be excluded and that's how we can work out the net worth of this particular company you have space over there you can calculate the net worth Tell me how we had defined the net worth. Forgotten? How did we get the net worth? Paid up share capital. Consider reserves which are created out of profit. Do include securities premium. From that deduct, any accumulated losses or deferred expenditure, all those will be deducted. One reserve will not be considered. Revaluation reserve. So we start with that, they are saying equity shares, what do you say, shall we consider equity share capital? So we say equity share capital, 10 crore shares of 10 rupees, what do you say, 100? They have used the word share capital, so I will also include preference share capital, so preference share capital. 2 crores, face value is 100 here, so 200, so we get 300 and then they say calls in areas is 50 crores, we require paid up share capital, so outstanding amount should be deducted. So let's calls in areas 50 so 250 I can call this as paid up share capital to this we say add they have given you share application money share application money it will not be considered by us, right? It's not a share capital, nor it is any reserve created out of profit. So ignore it. General reserve? Yes. So general reserve, general reserve, 20, profit and loss will be considered, profit and loss account, how much? 200 revaluation reserve not to be considered ignore it sinking fund what do you say sinking fund you will create out of your profits isn't it so we will consider sinking fund money will be transferred to sinking fund out of your profits. So that's the reason. Any reserve created out of profit will be considered. Unamortized share issue or underwriting expense. This item should be deducted, isn't it? So we use simply unamortized expense. That will be good enough. I will eliminate that one. Heavy ad advertisement carried forward. So this also seems to be a deferred revenue expenditure. So we say deferred revenue expenditure. 
deferred revenue expenditure, how much is it? 2 crores. That also we will deduct. Securities premium, should I consider it? See, it is not a reserve created out of profit, but in the definition of net worth, they have included securities premium. So, I will consider it. So, securities premium. Securities premium, how much is it? 170. Share warrants. It's not a share capital right now. ESOP outstanding. Shares will be issued, but in future. So, they are not share capital, nor they are any kind of reserve. So, we have exhausted the list. The total will give us net worth for end AS road map. Anyone with the answer? 640. Let us say we have done this calculation on 31st March 14. Let us say they are saying this uh, details are on 31st March 14. That means on 31st March 14, your net worth is 640 crores. That means you are a company which will get covered in phase 1. You will have to apply NDS from 1st April 16, is not it? Although as on today, if you are discussing that, then you should not worry much about the net worth for listed companies. Listed companies, they have to now all follow the end AS. And unlisted company, net worth is still important. It should not cross 250. Everyone okay with it?